well, all of us together as a cardiovascular community have done quite a job in re reducing door to balloon times. Once someone gets to the hospital, we get them to the cath lab quickly. That's been a tremendous effort over a couple of decades and it's been largely successful. The problem is it takes two to two and a half hours for someone to come to the emergency room. That was true in the 1980s, 1990s, the 2000 and 2010 beyond. We have done nothing to improve symptom to door times. So the idea was this, we have a lot of denial out there, we have a lot of confusion of chest pain with GI symptoms. Is there a way we could alert to someone to come to the emergency room and not use symptoms, but use a device to alert them? Keep in mind, and this is a somewhat staggering number, that 30 to 35 percent of heart attacks are silent, are silent. And so could we alert people to the fact that they're having a silent heart attack? So. There is a device, and we began this journey back in 2001, working on this device, where you put it in and it monitors your ST segments and alerts you if your ST segments have deviated without an increase in heart rate. In other words, signaling you that you've had a thrombotic event. So we enrolled about 900 people. 450 people had the alarm turned on, 450 people had it turned off. So this was a really a sham controlled trial. For six months we followed them and we looked for death, we looked for new Q waves on the EKG, and we looked for an arrival at the emergency room over two hours. Now, the study did not meet at that primary pre-specified endpoint. There was a numeric trend in favor of the alerting, but it didn't reach statistical significance. But the devices were still in, and they stayed in for another three years in both arms. So that's a tremendous duration of experience to compare with those first six months, those first six months where the device was not alarming. We had a new prospective statistical analysis plan that the FDA reviewed and approved. We had an event adjudication committee, and the FDA was most interested in a couple of things. If this goes off, what's the positive predictive value that you really had a heart attack? And they were very interested in the idea that, hmm, if you're alarming all these people, are you going to have a high false positive rate? And what we found was the positive predictive value was better with the alarming. That is, you know, you are more likely to have a heart attack if you had the alarm go off, first point. Second point, uh, the false positive rate. It turned out to be about two-thirds of a patient per year with symptoms alone, but that was cut down by to 0.16 of a patient per year uh, with the alarm on. So you cut the number of false positives down to a quarter of what it was. Probably for me, one of the most important findings was we detected 42, 42 silent MIs where the alarm went off, you had no symptoms, and you had an occlusive event. So that's about 5% of patients in the study had a silent heart attack. So the FDA label states that this is a more accurate method of detecting heart attack, uh, lowers the false positive rates, and may detect heart attacks in people who are asymptomatic. Well, right now, the sponsor is gearing up to be manufacturing this generation of the device. I want to focus on the science here. The science is, I think, interesting that we can detect heart attacks and get people in quicker. The future generations uh, will probably include things where instead of a, a invasive procedure, the device is just implanted subcutaneously, possibly. So like everything in technology, I think you could look forward to less invasive devices uh, that offer the same kind of benefits. That's part of the future.